Hi, I'm Sarah Hoffman. Uh, I've been on the project for many, many years uh, as a mapper, lately as a developer a lot, uh, Nominatin, you may know, you know Mark Treyas, also Fiji has built lots of stuff. And since last year, I've also joined the OSMF board, so that's why I'm up here today. Hi, I'm Guillaume Richard. I've been on the project for many years as well, joined the board um, in, when was it, 2019? At the end of 2019, I was the treasurer for two years. Now I'm the chairperson of the board. Um, that is going to be a bit repetitive, but I'm also active as a mapper for many years, mapping uh, various things in my city on hiking trips. Also was uh, helping with development of some software, uh, including any software like Strip Complete, where I help a bit. And also I'm uh, for a year on the board and trying to help in this way. Yeah, I'm Roland Albrecht. Um, I'm on the board since December 2021. I've taken over the treasurer's job from Geome and profited greatly from his work. And um, I'm also I'm known in the OSM community as a developer of the Open of the Overpass API. And um, I'm also in the engineering working group um, because we are short of volunteers in the working group, so I keep that up. And uh, so just as a short reminder, if you consider the, to do something with a lot of impact, then look into one of the working groups whether you could be able to join there or as I see Andy, try to develop towards a role of a maintainer. Okay. So we're gonna open it to questions if you want the big blue cube to to break the ice, I'll, I'll start with a question. Um, what's a cool thing you've mapped lately? It's been a while, actually. Uh, oh. I do go out for hikes occasionally and still do some mapping of hiking trails. I found an unmapped path in Central Park in the middle of it. I mapped it. I think my favorite things to map, so I mapped recently, was is new bicycle infrastructure appearing in my city. So recently I, on, on the way to the uh, Antwerp, I got one more bicycle parking. Well, I'm most proud of uh, having uh, mapped the entire bus stops of my home city. Much of them were already mapped, but they were vastly incomplete. And so uh, I've, ride, uh, I've ridden basically all the bus lines to get this complete. And then there had been a point where something of the street map really was complete. There was a day where all the bus stops were in order. A couple of months later came the um, public transport version 2 thing and a couple of people who tried to improve things. Now it's a little bit more messy, but in principle, these bus stops are still there. Should, should we just do two and two microphones instead of passing this one around? And yeah. Yes, yeah, Simon. One, two, three. It's working. Okay. Um, th this is probably an odd question, but I've had the feeling over the last nine years, decade or so, that there's been very little communication from the board to the OSM community overall. There's all the formal stuff is okay, there's board meetings, there's minutes and so on, but there is very little, for lack of a better word, chit chat between the board saying, oh, by the way, we're going to do, we are planning on doing this or that. Uh, just in a in a non formal way, um, and I don't know whether it's just me that's noticed that, but whether that is something that you feel is a bit lacking as well. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, 
Um, I would agree that I would uh, share this feeling that it's a little bit lacking. Um, the background of this is um, that we have found that people were trying to find interpretations in whatever had been issued and that this has been a board policy. And um, so we have to live to do that. And so, um, so it's more clear to people uh, where things are just unfinished thoughts or comments and where things are actually close to what the board plans to, to use as an assumption. And um, so um, we try to get a more serious impression of the board, and I think this has contributed to um, reducing the chit-chat in the sense of that people don't too much prompt us on things that were apparently, to our view, um, only chit-chat, but where people we uh, misunderstood this as a formal board uh, communication. Okay, I can also add a bit because I try to uh, improve exactly that. But there is a balance between, for example, I comment immediately in the community forum and turns out that uh, I say something that is controversial or other people disagree and turns to be my personal opinion getting interpreted as official statement. And so the, how we are doing is that uh, we are posting internally comment that someone is planning to post, give some time for other uh, people on the board to review and maybe protest that uh, I'm trying to say something stupid, and then I'm posting it, uh, uh, or some analysis posting with uh, uh, some delay. So that is has the negative problem that we are posting less and with often with a delay of a uh, few days. I like chit chat. Um, you, you know, I like chit chat, Simon, because there's, there's hardly a day where you don't see me on on one of the OSM chats where you hang out as well um I, I do like the informalness of it of uh being able to talk about ideas knowing they're not fully baked um i uh, i i know it's always um desirable to have more communication it also comes at the cost of of other things um but we are working on um, the communication working group is working a lot on actually communicating um, and uh, getting the the socials active again and having it not unidirectional but in both directions uh, of of involving the community in the story that gets told on that. Um, also, um, th there's hardly a day where I don't receive some kind of message from someone about uh, OSM. So the, the door's open there. Um, anyone can chat with the board and you're probably going to receive a, an answer. Is is this the kind of chit chat that you had in mind, or is this are we sitting too straight formal? Andy. Okay, if you ask back, I'll I'll carry on. Now, I, I I just think that it probably has to do with the growth of OpenStreetMap. A decade ago, there were two hundred thousand people that had mapped, and now there's two million. Um, it's just that, you know, the board saying, by the way, we would like your opinion on that. Can we have a discussion on a mailing list or something like that? That doesn't really seem to happen anymore. It's it's more, okay, we're going to do a survey or something like that. Um, so it, it, it's more formalized. Um, the, the survey that we did, um, was it two years ago now? um made it um a lot easier for us to um uh, quantify the feedback we were getting um i think it was precious for that it doesn't replace um chatting on the on the um, on the community website or on the mailing list it's a useful quantifiable complement to that like it it it's let us 
see what 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 part of uh, the feedback we were getting was shared by many people. Yeah, to add to that, to add to this, uh, what you're saying is co correct. So we have those five million contributors now. So really going on the forum and chit chatting uh, will reach probably the amount like is here in the room, which is not really the community. So I think this is also why we need to change a little bit the communication strategy, see more getting, trying to reach with what we're doing more people over, uh, I think the blog, for example, as, as Guillaume was always saying, the communications working group is trying to get up more. And there were a few more b blog posts this year. Uh, I hope you saw this. Um, so yeah, I think this is part of growing up or growing uh, so that this changes. Is this, yes. Many organizations have one of two views of what board members should do. And in business terms, it's usually termed executive directors or non-executive directors. So a non-executive director might be involved for one day a month and they just check the organization is working properly. But I get the feeling that being an OSMF board member is firmly in the executive there is a lot to do, and you're expected to do a lot. Is that, or, or I'm interested in what your individual ideas are on that, whether you think the way it has worked is the way it should work, or whether you're considering making any changes. Well, the first thing um, we should keep in mind, it's, it's an ongoing problem that the word director is defined in British law, and that's different from, common, uh, from the common usage otherwise in English. And so um, it's dangerous to speak of um, even this ex executive, non-executive di director division. We don't have it in the articles of association. So we could uh, discuss about whether we have more people with, uh, with what uh, specific uh, rights or non-rights, but uh, technically um, our articles of association define whom we, whom we have with, uh, with the formal power. And um, we can't just change that. And I would prefer to refer to director only to, uh, to those people to avoid any confusion about this. This other thing that had been under consideration to have a position as an executive director because it would uh, simplify a lot of things. For example, we, want, we would be a lot friendlier to the people we have hired or we have under contract where, the, where it's not easy for the moment being. And, um, but telling this executive director would uh, complete the confusion. So um, I would start with sorting out what we actually want to achieve, uh, achieve and then to find a word different from director to make sure um, we are on the same page. I would also add that uh, it's not a question in which role a current uh, board uh, is. Uh, we are basically uh, or trying to do both uh, this kind of high-level planning and uh, a more day-to-day uh, -day, uh, handling of uh, various things. So the, at this moment, there is basically uh, no separations in such a layer and, uh, and there, the same people do both of things. Yeah, I think we outgrew the model where having it all volunteers um, could be sustainable. We outgrew that a long time ago. Um, and it's through luck that we have had volunteers who were able to spend the time to take care of the direction of the OSMF. Um, call it whatever you want, but we need someone working full time on, on running the OSMF. I think we have space for about a dozen people working on it. Um, it's it's um, something that has concerned me for a long time, the, the bottleneck that the board can be, that the free time of the board determines what gets done on the foundation. Um, and you you get a big variety of, of, um, of directors on the board. You get people like Alan who come with their long experience and I'm going to do this and this and this and this and I'm retired so I got plenty of time 
and that was fantastic. And um, you're not going to get seven of these people on the board every year. Um, so yes, I think we need to grow in that direction. And the board is actually, there's a draft being passed around the board at the moment on what we want that hired position to be, what we want them to do. So this is something that we are actively working on. Yeah, so my maybe more personal view here is we do a lot of operational work, definitely. I agree with my board members, so that was, was a very stressful year in this sense. Um, I think some of what you do, maybe even a large part, could be done by volunteers. What the problem here is that it's getting so large that you really need to organize the volunteers. And this, it really doesn't work without. So we, for a long time, we've worked, everybody's working on their corner and it happens to work together. Um, but we are in a, in a shape now where we need somebody to look, okay, is this really getting done? Do we need to find somebody else to do it and so on? And this is where I see we really need help with this. Uh, yeah, coordination and where I think really somebody Who's, who's paid to do this, who can do it full-time, who can really every day look at, keep this stuff uh, in mind, what needs to be done. This is where I really see very need to help. And, and it's even more complicated than in the company because in the company you have these people who you can really tell what to do. Uh, you're paid, so do this. While managing volunteers is really interesting. They do what they want and you really have to find the thing which really they like doing and then get them in the mood to do it. Uh, it's interesting, it's a challenge. Uh, but yeah. Maybe from each of you about kind of your strategic vision for OSM. So basically, where you want each of you to see OSM in maybe five years? What kind of do you think most important challenges for OSM? What will keep you up at night? Except operational work, obviously. Thank you. On. Yes, uh, that's a big question, um, and we realized that we needed a more formal answer to that, and this is why for the last three years we have worked on, on, on publishing a strategic plan, um, which is online now, which is the, the board's shared vision over three years, so many board members, of where the foundation should go. Um, are you asking about a plan like this, or are you asking about our personal views of where we should go? Uh, personal opinion, okay, yeah. Um, for me, I, I see an OSMF that has to grow not because it wants to grow like a business would, but to match the growth of the data and the demand on the data. We have... Um, people all around the world who rely on OSM uh, for the livelihoods. Uh, we are crucial in many environments and uh, we need to um, have the reliability and the stability that comes with that. That's also something that comes from the, from the survey that, that the community shares. That's, that's one of the priorities we should focus on. Uh, so the technical stability. Um, we also um, want to to be um, more have more local chapters, have uh, larger incentives uh, to be local chapters. Um, and uh, no, personally, I think we also need to work on making the data easier to use. Um, like right now, if you're new to SM and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to use it for my stuff. And you're like, oh, there's these tags. What do they mean? Oh, there's a wiki. It's a lie. Um, that we need to have a process to find consensus of what the data should look like and, and document it while we're doing it uh, and um, make it easier for people to use it. Sorry, that was a long answer. So. Okay, so I continue. So... If you're asking really about the OSNF here, so personally, I really see it as the operational part. Um, it's doing quite a good job if you going out and mapping and, and using the data uh, don't really see much of the OSM foundation. Um, 
So that means providing really the hardware and making sure the finances are there. And this is really hard and burning work that needs to be done. Um, and otherwise, I really like the movement of OSM of being this unorganized, organized community. And I think we've reached a lot of this and there's still potential to innovate and go into the direction that I can't even know now. So, and that's the foundation really needs to make sure this, this works and yeah. For very generic but uh, important part is to make possible for people who want to contribute to enable them to contribute, to uh, keep various uh, systems running and uh, also to uh, make possible uh, for more interested people to uh, also contribute through working groups uh, in uh, other places uh, so that anyone who wants to improve the map, improve the map data so they can join and participate. Yeah, I would like to differentiate, um, as the others have done, quite explicitly between OpenStreetMap on one hand, the OpenStreetMap Foundation, and the OpenStreetMap Foundation's board. And uh, important is the vision for OpenStreetMap. And um, we have a couple of challenges. Um, one of the more obvious ones are the short term, like the vandalism, which has hopefully been solved in a couple of years, and uh, other time things, uh, the vector tile story will also be hopefully be solved. This is um, the important thing about this, also about the other things about OpenStreetMap is all these things will happen outside the foundation and it's a good thing. There's a lot of innovation and the only way you can have innovation with a relatively low risk is that you empower people. It's what Steve had said, uh, having keeping OpenStreetMap as a platform, empowering people to do an innovation, to bring it to the community, let it uh, get the feedback there, and then it will more or less uh, grow into the, uh, will more and more grow into the uh, OpenStreetMap ecosystem. And this is not under control of the foundation and even less under control of the board taking place. And there are a couple of challenges to, to solve. I mean, um, we must ensure that, um, that we reach the next generation of people, that they don't take uh, mapping for granted. This is, um, I think it's an easy overlooked problem. I, I, I got to OpenStreetMap because I got annoyed by the license terms of the then existing uh, data sources. And um, the next generation never has felt that pain. We have to find a story for this um, to, to make clear why it is important to have it and um, to care for this. So we have to, to seek out for the next generation. And I think we don't know yet what the answer looks like. and um, but it's probably more making people aware of the problem because it's solved by OpenStreetMap, that it's still there. Then you have the problem, um, it's the diversity thing, which I, for which it was interesting that I became father three years ago. And you see that um, the thing you have um, without a child, without a family, and probably also depending on job conditions, that you could just sit down on a weekend and um, have some hours on block um, uninterrupted to solve a problem. That's a very rare thing. And now, you, now I'm still in an extremely privileged position in one of the, in, in a quite rich country with a good income and so on and so on. And um, now imagine this for, for a single parenting uh, woman in Africa who has um, no stable way of income to ensure um, the livelihood. There's definitely um, still to deliver uh, some form of um, from some form of editor way of contributing, where you could really within minutes make a contribution that differs. Of course, there are things that uh, like street complete, but I think this um, this experience that you are um, that you solve a problem that poses to you that you could just go out and say, oh, I need to have this drinking fountain map. I need to have uh, this, uh, this missing alley map and so on, so on. That's, that's not in focus of street complete. And so it's probably more like um, we need something. We don't know what's finally coming. Maybe we need some form of Vespucci that's so, uh, so far um, down resourced that it can run in Africa on an old phone with a reduced data plan. Maybe it's already possible and Simon will intervene in a minute. Then where you could get this kick that you uh, get your scratch itched um, when an um, environment 
what a single parenting mother would find in Afri even in Africa to, to get that kick that open street map really improves the life and that's that's one of the challenges that's underestimated and again that's not a thing that the foundation could uh, could do it's a thing that would better be done outside the foundation because of the structure of the of the risk it's better if a couple of people try and we see what works best and um, so in the end you hear that the foundation's role is still um, still more as um, keeping the lights on taking some uh, taking some growth it's dictated from what's happening in the open street map ecosystem and there will be points where the foundation will set initiatives because um, it's the best strategic way to do this but um, the point is always um, we should solve the problems from the open street map perspective and then then assess whether the things the foundation can do um, help with this. And I expect that the things we will remember in five years that has happened will mostly be those from the open feedback system and little from the foundation. Uh, it's a bit funny because I would, uh, I'm right now uh, at the uh, state of the map with uh, Tobias and uh, one of things we are uh, planning to do is to do a big mini, ha mini uh, street complete hackathon and I am working exactly on adding street furniture in street complete and also every door is I think the other answer that uh, uh, could work for this uh, for this task um, one two three one, two, three. Okay. Um, I wasn't actually going to answer Roland's question, but you can actually US, use Vespucci completely without a mobile connection. Um, but that was not my question. Um, I, it's going to be another softball where I really know the answer, but I think the audience would be interested um, in what are the major operational projects that you are spending time on in the OSMF board right now? Well, I have to reflect. Uh, finances were a large um, were a large thing, and um, otherwise, I would say the uh, minutes reflect quite accurately what's going on. The minutes of both. We had the, a couple of policies, um, which is um, where I think the general stance of this board is um, that we accept growth in the sense of. If there is a problem that's uh, systemic, we would um, not only solve the problem, but uh, also try to make a policy that in the future the, this, the problem doesn't get back to the board again. And this had been the global ban. We had sorting out uh, travel policies. Um, is there anything else? Um, I'll just pass the microphone. Okay, one uh, major part that took quite a lot of time is uh, fundraising, what is not very uh, maybe uh, exciting but uh, necessary if we won't pay for various things then sadly we need uh, money to pay uh, for it. And um, this work? Yeah. Uh, another big part we've been looking into this year is finally moving the OSMF out of the UK, which we have to do partially for, or for a large part for license reasons, uh, because the ODBL is largely based on European law, uh, EU law, um, but also we, the goal of this is to finally be a real uh, charity, non-profit with charity state. Uh, this is also what we want to reach. So this means uh, talking to lawyers, how can this be done, how can we move our assets. We have contracts with each of you with the contributor terms and this is something we just need to sort out. Um, another thing which has been going on a little bit on a low flame is looking into the development of the OpenStreetMap website, which you have heard the talk this morning from Andy. Um, so we've been talking to people, uh, seeing what can be done to get this a little bit uh, going again maybe also financially and uh, luckily it's kind of solved itself over the year by people just coming and, and doing stuff but yeah this is one of the things the EWG needed a little bit of help there and then that's also the board which can just so it's basically 
connecting people, the, finding the right people who can do stuff, talking to them, connecting them, and then seeing, okay, what can we do to sort this stuff out? Um, strategic plan was a large part. Uh, I think uh, hopefully you have seen the result of this um, at a large part. And uh, for, for my major parts of work on the board, um, I'm the board's uh, link to the fundraising committee. Uh, and that's taken up a lot of my time this year. Um, what you see on supporting.openstreetmap.org is a, is a result of that work, not just me, but the fantastic volunteers we have on that committee. Um, I work a lot with operations. Uh, Grant and I talk pretty much every day. Um, that's Grant, who keeps everything running. And, and, and Tom, and Andy, and, Tom, and many other people. And, and Paul. And yes, um, I work as well with the communication working groups. If you've noticed an uptick in, in uh, stuff that uh, that appears on the OpenStreetMap social channels, that's a result of that. Um, and I also do links with other working groups uh, for the board. I also... Uh, okay, uh, but uh, I have one more uh, thing. I also spend a uh, bit of time, uh, okay, more than a bit of time on uh, attrib uh, on attribution, mis uh, missing attribution, uh, starting from cases where attribution is completely missing to handle some uh, more clear, clear cases without going into some really tricky ones. But that also took a lot of time. I think the recurring topic had also been the um, that Microsoft is part of trying to help us with the um, to gain us users with the map builder project, but was uh, clumsy in the way of in a way of, and uh, this required a lot of talk and explanation. And uh, but we are getting on track, and um, there is now an agreement between all sides. How, how it could end up that you would from a Microsoft map site, if you click to want to edit that map, ultimately end up to become an open street map uh, mapper. And um, there are still some work to do, but um, I think the major part of the work and um, we try to get the ultimate say in this to the data working group. But uh, of course, Microsoft um, cannot just talk to the data working group and so um, we are trying to relay messages here and ensure that the data working group uh, gets everything essential and that we uh, support them to, to get a Microsoft Map Builder um, construction that's um, helpful to OpenStreetMap and not harmful. Hello. Hello. I've got a completely oddball question. Just change the whole thing. I was in a lovely talk earlier today by Organic Maps, one of the developers there. And one of the major things that they're missing, that they're being asked for drastically, is traffic speed data or routing uh, speed data. So that's effectively sensor data that is collected and amalgamated and privacy conscious statements and stuff like that. And it's collected and analyzed and it becomes a data source that feeds, you know, at this time of day, how fast can you travel down the road? Oh, oh wait, it's raining today, can I travel down this road? But there's the whole concept of passive data collection of like, there's a hundred of us in this room and there's one access point, you know, it, it, there's passive data collection that OpenStreetMap hasn't done. So my question is, should OpenStreetMap uh, do passive support the collection of passive data collection in some future dream state? And would the foundation have the energy and the a way of supporting it? It's a completely oddball, it's completely new to you, so it's completely individual. It's not, not I'm not demanding the foundation do sensor data tomorrow, but it's a unique thing that we haven't done. Should we do it? I would expand a bit that uh, first thing is this live traffic data and also uh, this uh, uh, not even live but typical traffic data is also very useful for cycling routing to avoid heavy traffic roads and go on 
smaller traffic roads even if both are tagged equally in OpenStreetMap. This also yeah. appeared. One, one thing for start, if that would be done, then it would be definitely need to be completely separate database because it does not make sense to record this kind of things as tags or relations or anything directly in current data model. Yeah. Yes, I agree. It definitely. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I agree. It has to. Off, it's completely new to OpenStreetMap. It's not something. It doesn't fit in our data model. It, it, there's a whole lot of privacy concerns. But should we do it? Should the foundation support it? Should we? Should we go sensor data? And it applies to a lot more than just boring car drivers. It could be how fast will this train go down this line, or how fast is something? You know. Are we all in the same building? There's, there's so much sensor data that can be passively collected with the right sort of approval. And organic maps developers would love to do it, but there's just nowhere to put it. So, so you're asking, you're asking two things: should we and could we? Yeah. Uh, should we and should we expand beyond the one database? And in a way, we have we have GPX traces that we're not doing much with. Um, I think we should. I think it's really interesting. I think there's a need for it. Um, could we? This is typically the kind of stuff where I come to you and you roll your eyes at me. You know, I wish another thing. Um, I hope we can. I hope we will be in a place where we can do such things. Yes. Well, um, coming from my side um, about the can, I would be happy if we are technical able, but we should keep in mind that it's the classical example of a networking effect and um, that. Whatever we collect, um, if people start to compare it to, pu people, uh, to people who have managed to log in half mankind, uh, it would always look ridiculous. So we have to find a framing where it's clear um, um, that we are only getting a fraction because we just can only get a fraction. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a really personal answer. I think it's this is something the community needs to decide if we do this, if we as projects should we do this. Um, this is where I say, okay, the OSINT awesome Foundation is the supporting one, and then when this is something the community says, this direction we want to go, we need to talk about this. Personally, should we? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I'm, when I do talks, I often sell OpenStreetMap as the one which does the privacy as uh, opposed to everybody else who's using map data. And so this is somehow, for me, a selling point, which I don't want to lose. Uh, I wanted to mention something kind of related that it is it would be completely different to uh, what we are doing right now. And uh, it would be, it is really important to uh, avoid various privacy issues. Uh, so uh, it, it would be really tricky and really unlike what we do. But if I could have a casmatic spell and get it uh, working and without a, a working with privacy issues and so on, uh, then I would do it. But it is uh, unclear to, uh, to me how hard it would be and is it even possible. Here. Yep. Going back to something said earlier, what <clears throat> was said, Microsoft can't just ask the data working group and uh, can't just talk to them. Why? Um, because the Microsoft asked this an excellent question that uh, was something that uh, concerned more than one working group. I like uh, the licensing working group had to be involved and. How can we sign up people actually? What do we need to formally do to do that? What can we uh, skip? Um, it, it, it was um, also something where the uh, website will need to be updated. So DWG cannot decide to update the website. Um, so it, it, it was more a uh, coordination thing where the board needed to get all the working groups to talk about this and, and agree on something. Um, it doesn't mean that the board was, was taking decisions over the working groups. Hello, is it working? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I found a 
the question very interesting about coloring traffic data and stuff like that. Um, the reason I have a project called Bike Data Project, where I try to do this for cyclists. And there's the privacy issue you talked about earlier. It's very interesting. Um, my approach was the other way around. Like, maybe we should do this, but properly, instead of doing it in a pri less privacy-friendly way, and maybe that way make everyone's life more private. So that was sort of the, the reason behind this. And yeah, what's your view on this? And um, yeah, I'm sorry I found this topic very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds really interesting. And also Grant is shouting, we should chat. Uh, I think that's the right answer. Does anyone want to comment on that? Um, I think the general question is, should we have temporal information? Uh, and that can also be stuff that is not about humans, like there's this construction site that day on that street. Two, three. Okay, it's me again, sorry. Um, I just wanted to point out that this is something that the OSMF has actually been engaged in and in the form of answering competition authorities that have been asking about Google and Apple's monopoly in these kinds of areas and where, uh, this is my opinion, there's no chance in hell that we are going to do this, but where there might be an angle where we free up the data that Google and Apple have, and that's what I think is the most realistic way of that becoming available to the organic maps of the world. I, I know, with, with my hat as Android dev on, I know that it's, that the restrictions on the mobile platforms are getting to a point where it is difficult to record a GPX track don't even start with any other kind of dynamic data. Um, you talked a lot about the, the, the amount of work, also sometimes the amount of stress maybe. So I was thinking, okay, you need some people to step on the board to, you need a manager. But there's a, a huge community of ind individual mappers. How can they help to support you? What are the simple things for mappers to show their appreciation for the foundation? Um, the best way, if you want to get involved, is uh, in, in your area of passion. There must be a working group. Um, all the working groups are always looking for new volunteers. Um, uh, and that's also a good way of, of getting, um, getting a foot in the door of, of the foundation. If you want to join the board later, like you've been on the working groups, you know how the thing works. Um, yes, um, from licensing to, um, data vandalism, to handling the membership, to communication, to fundraising, um, to if you if you want to help out with the operations if you want to help out with the engineering and i'm sure i'm missing some working groups because this is just, just off the top of my head but there is one for you uh, okay i can also say that uh, if someone wants to say thank you that is uh, also really appreciated if also uh, is a kind of repeat, but if someone has spare entertainment funds, then donating is also very helpful and useful. Yeah, I think there's, um, Jom has given a quite complete list. I remember also now the uh, state of the map, haven't you? This? And, um, <laughs> and the, yeah, exactly, yeah, he's faster than me in this. So you see, there's really a variety of working groups and um, this, there's uh, the LCC, LCC GV, CVG, the Local Chapters and Communications Working Group. And 
they are more friendly than their name sounds like, and uh, they're very friendly. And um, so the point is um, that's also a very good development because it means that um, we have the organizational uh, breath to, to receive people and really look out, engage in the working groups. That's where the real work and where the real decisions are done. And um, that way you, you help most. I would like to recite the question from, from community.osm.org. There had been one single question, as far as I've been seen, about the global ban Paris, uh, policy, whether it is uh, reconcilable with the uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection uh, Rules. Um, and yes, it is. We just have a legitimate OIA interest to remove people that, uh, that damage the project. There might be details where we, uh, uh, where we change handling, but on the other hand, we have this in place to um, avoid that another, cases of, uh, another case would uh, take too much attention and uh, give the troll a platform. And we have seen two candidates for this in the last 10 years. So there would be probably forever too few cases where this applies that we ever would do any fine tuning on this. Anyone else? Yeah, so I'm gonna be reading a question from online. Uh, it's from Yelmer Firat. Uh, he's asking, what are your ideas on big tagging disputes? Uh, like forest, uh, should these be resolved, and how can we move the consensus? Uh, okay, uh, I can. I will kind of repeat uh, answer to question uh, from last elections. Uh, I think that the role of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, OpenStreetMap Foundation board, is to provide community forum uh, or mailing list or other places to discuss it, and uh, that we, sh uh, board or foundation, uh, should not decide on tagging disputes, like, for example, uh, how exactly forests should be tagged. It is even explicitly stated as one of things that board and foundation is not doing and is uh, not planning to handle. So we do not tell people how to map, but we should be providing the right platform for the community to decide how to map the forest um, and to document how the forest get mapped. And uh, that's something I would like us to be more active on. Uh, the current, um, if you've been on the tagging mailing list, you know what it can be like. Uh, I think you're the only one who enjoys it in the universe. Um, <laughs> And uh, yes, also once consensus has been reached on a tag, uh, it's it's difficult to get that to trickle all the way down into uh, the data users. Um, Andy had a really interesting uh, bit of feather when was Heidelberg? Yeah, a while ago. And um, yeah, there's definitely a need for uh, for um, better, clearer tagging. Uh, which is how Overture uh, got started because we haven't been good at solving that problem. I'm not sure whether it, that was the main uh, reason for Overture, but <laughs> definitely we uh, we can improve things here, but not by uh, deciding on how exactly tag uh, speed limits uh, in urban areas in Poland because. Uh, uh, for many reasons, that is not a good thing for boards to decide on. Just add a little bit to that. So, what you have to think here is it's a human problem we're trying to solve. Um, I think this disagreement we have, they're coming from the different areas we live in, and it's all a little bit different. I mean, you see this the thing is people come up with the nearest examples as soon as you make some suggestion for that tag and say, oh no, it works differently here, there's this new thing. So, yeah, I mean, so the question is how much can the foundation then put a technical solution in place? We still have to have these discussions. We are not going, they are annoying. Uh, that's, that's true sometimes, but we have to have them. And this is 
a lot why this is still working with those in large scales. That there are these long discussions, and in the end, it works out pretty well in the map itself. Uh, so most people go then with what was decided because it's easier, and because it shows the map and everything. So yeah, uh, I'm afraid that's again a limited thing which we need to sort out. Yeah, just for the record, um, Heidelberg has been 2019. And the fact that the, um, the software dispute resolution panel in the end never has uh, constituted or has constituted, but never had been forced to make a decision on anything, um, shows that the problem is not as dire as it is some side, sometimes perceived. I'm not aware of any tagging problem that is um, existential to the project. And um, we are, I'm well aware of a couple of uh, tagging problems where the people, or at least the same part of the people, ultimately uh, warp their minds about a good enough solution. And uh, I do believe that for the future we will see that people uh, will still be able to, to find a consensus for each individual problem that's good enough. And as Sarah has pointed out, this often happens if people from different backgrounds come together and um, have a different angel on what's, what's important, what's the property, and what some things are, and uh, there's really there are really productive things happening in these discussions. Not in all um, not in all posts, but um, if you this through the post, you will find some posts where you really get get the essential information where the conflict between different points of views comes from, and then you will get insight that you could get nowhere else. It's even more valuable than the map data. So. In the end, I would say it's a positive thing. It had in the past and will in the future always settle in all phases because people are in the end sane enough. And um, on top of that, all attempts by the foundation to, to intervene in one form or to even give a more explicit platform have um, proven to be unnecessary. So um, I wouldn't change anything here. Okay. Uh, did you consider? No way. Um, let me rephrase that. Um, so I was really impressed by uh, Christian Quest's talk yesterday about Panoramax, which is basically an open source alternative for Mapillary, Carta View, etc. And I was thinking this would be a yeah, it's, it's maybe more of an input because it was just presented yesterday. So, of course, there was no time to consider anything. But maybe there could be like an official OpenStreetMap org instance of Panoramax so that there's a, at least a fallback go-to place to, to upload um, street, no, not street view pictures, uh, like street imagery <laughs> pictures. Um, to the OpenStreetMap sphere that they can be used. And one idea to like battle the obviously very, very large uh, requirements for space, uh, there could be a policy that uh, if there's a newer imagery available, the old one will be deleted for, for a street, for example. Because for OpenStreetMap mapping, only the newest and best quality pictures would be um, useful, I guess. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Did. Um, otherwise, I'm grateful for the question, but um, I haven't checked it right now, but from my point of view, whenever I've checked, the hardware costs were prohibitive, and uh, so I would wait for another estimation somebody would make that it would be viable to run such a platform out of the um, foundation's budget. Yeah, so I mean, I'm kind of giving the uh, same answer as Grant, no, not quite, but so there's all these questions. I mean, it goes in the same. Should we have the sensor data as well? Should we have the street image? Should we maybe do uh, also imagery um, ourselves? Uh, and I just wonder, I mean, we are already struggling with our foundation here with the map data. Shouldn't there be having other open source projects which do these things, maybe better than we, because we are doing the map data well? 
uh, and we're working together. Uh, this is rather the structure I would like to see here. So have a huge community around panoramics and we are working together. That would personally my be, be my favorite. Um, it, it's it's still hello hello hello, hello. No, okay. it's, it's still it's still something quite new, and I'm not sure how Christian does it. He comes out with a genius idea every few months like that. Um, it's uh, storage is cheap, as Grant has pointed out, so that wouldn't be an issue. It's um, is there a necessity for the foundation to run the service, or is the French community perfectly capable of running it? Uh, one of the beauties of the OSM ecosystem is that you get a few of these really important tools that end up running on OpenStreetMap DE, for example, or all, all, all around the world. Um, we don't need to be running every single service. If it's necessary, then we can and we should. Um, you mentioned street, view, street level imagery. Um, something we are working on as well is um, becoming better at hosting uh, aerial imagery um, and, and um, making it easier to publish it. Um, that's something Grant is working on um, because we see a true necessity for that and we see there's a, there's a gap. If you have a big geotiff of your, of, of your region where you are and you want to use it for mapping, it's going to be a bit tedious to, to use that and, and make that available to all the editors. Um, not saying no to the idea, and it's still very new, so it would need to see if there's a need for us to host panoramics. Can I say that? Can I? Yeah. yeah. It's 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 a comment it's a commentary. In fact, the 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 originality of the Panoramax project is that it is it is decentralized. It's the story. So there are some towns in France that are already offering their servers to store the project. So I think that uh, what is very interesting in in Panoramax approach is uh, is the fact that it is decentralized and it can inspire eventually other open project of that type. So, so it, 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 Panoramax is, is great in that sense. I was very much impressed by what Christian Care Quest is, is bringing again, <laughs> right? Uh, Panoramax, uh, uh, for this question and previous questions, uh, I would definitely would uh, need to know more uh, about this topic. I plan to view this presentation as soon as it is published. Sadly, uh, sadly, I was not there uh, yesterday. Uh, but so, but in principle, I like this idea. But is the question uh, how significant is upkeep? How significant is hardware cost? It would like cost like uh, one uh, one uh, thousand euros and would require no maintenance. Then, uh, obviously, uh, if it costs uh, one hundred million dollars and requires twenty dedicated people to maintain, then uh, obviously no. Uh, it is something somewhere in bet in between, and uh, I would need to know more before I would be able to answer. But in principle, I like idea. Another round of applause for all the board members.